this is the end of day one of my arts pilgrimage to see Grayson Perry's Tomb of the Unknown Craftsman at the British Museum. I'm here in a hotel in King's Cross in London. The day started with the first leg of the pilgrimage, which went from Carrick on Shannon down to Knock, appropriately enough, via bus. Uh, which was quite straightforward and um, thanks to the wonderful volunteer Gary who drove the LAPWD bus meant that we got down there plenty of time. Uh, Knock Airport, small, quiet, windswept, relatively straightforward. Uh, the nicest part was going through the security check uh, when I, they took my hot water bottle and said that they had to empty it which was all fine and good but when I got through to the other side of the security gate they'd gone off and refilled it for me so that was just very very nice of them and very good. So yeah had a little bit of extra breakfast in Knock Airport and then spent ages queuing to get onto a Ryanair flight. Um, ended up being put in the back of the plane right at the very end. Uh, it was a bit of a, uh, a bumpy flight. I mean it was a bit windy but nothing hurricane type but the flight itself was actually pretty uncomfortable let us say. Um, so yeah got into Luton Airport then at about uh, what was it half past 12, found our way to the shuttle bus which fortunately uh, turned out to have an access ramp although there was no information about that available on any of the websites that I checked and even when I rang the train company uh, to book assistance um, they ended up having to ring some poor guy standing on the platform in the Luton railway station to find out whether the bus was accessible or not. So yeah, so got to the Luton train station through shuttle bus and then got on another train um, with assistance getting on and off. Uh, it was one of those little commuter trains so not exactly lap of luxury and even though the assistant said she had um, booked a wheelchair access space for me on the train and another one beside it for Isaac. Uh, I was just put in beside the doors. Uh, so yeah, not unlike travelling on a dart or something, but at least the driver knew I was there and so on. Uh, and it took ages for someone to come get me off the train. Um, lovely assistance guy in St Pancras. But it seems from the chat he was having with his mate that the company that were supposed to have come and got me just weren't around, that it essentially wasn't his job, someone went off to find him. So there I was, St Pancras, I uh, got off Euston Road around the corner and got here to my hotel. Um, so it's already been a long journey and even though I was here before three o'clock and it's now about nine o'clock, um, that's all I really tried to do today. Um, I decided to come over to see Grayson Perry's exhibition because I only really discovered the work of Grayson Perry uh, in the last few months and uh, was absolutely blown away by it. And there was a couple of programmes that I got to see, one on BBC and one on Sky, which were about this exhibition and the background to it. And uh, the exhibition is in collaboration with the British Museum. So there are elements of the idea of artistic pilgrimage and of going to a special place to see a work of art and worship at the shrine of the artist and how the contemporary artist has really become uh, a religious figure in contemporary society. Um, and then the other element of it is a celebration of craftsmanship through the many ages of history and th that kind of dialogue then between, in particularly in contemporary arts, between ideas about arts and ideas about crafts and how so many of the objects through which 
we explore and understand the history of our people and the history of humanity really through a cultural lens that these artifacts um, generally don't have a name attached to them in terms of the person who created it that they're identified in terms of where and when they are but not in terms of the individual who actually creates the piece and the piece then is also seen as something of an exemplar of that time and place and not necessarily as any kind of individual expression which is how contemporary artists would see themselves so um, in response to that I'm making my pilgrimage because I had thought because I saw programs about this on television that then the exhibition must be long over but in fact uh, when Chris was over with her family over New Year and they decided to take a trip to the British Museum with her uncle Ken who passed away less than a week later um, she found that the exhibition was still on and so she went around it and bought the catalogue and brought it back for me and when I learned it was still on I just went, okay, this is something I need to do. Um, the, another element of the exhibition is that um, Perry was able to go through the collection in the British Museum and um, select pieces to be on display alongside his own works. Um, so it's there's a lot of playfulness and a lot of subversion about it and I'm really interested and looking forward to going to see it tomorrow but um, as part of my pilgrimage and my appreciation of um, what Perry's work is all about and what he himself is all about um, of course I had to make decisions about what I was going to wear particularly because traveling around on one's own with a large purple sparkly power chair and large Alsatian guide dog uh, one can can't help but to be a bit of traveling theater and so I'm completely embracing that and taking that on board for my trip there tomorrow so I shall record another log um, after I have done all that I will attempt to do some writing as well um, in the meantime, take some photographs and some sound recordings and uh, yeah, put it all together as my own pilgrimage diary. So I shall bid good night to you and um, see you on the morrow. As soon as I found the stop button, naturally speaking. <laughs>